call the December 9th meeting of the Carolina County Board of Supervisors to order. Let the record state that all board members are here. Mr. Black representing Western Carolina, Mr. Seeley representing Bowling Green, Mr. Underwood representing Reedy Church, Mr. Akers representing the Madison District, Mr. Taylor representing Port Royal, and I'm Floyd Thomas representing the Manapanai District. Uh, at this time, I'll ask everyone to stand for our invocation, please. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come before you this day first to say thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for your grace and mercies that you've given us. We ask now that you bless us, guide us, direct us to do your will as we do the best we can for the county. And Lord, let us remember as we approach this season of great joy and glad tidings, we ask that you be with us today and every day and let that spirit go forth forever. These and all things we ask in the name of the risen Christ and Savior, <coughs> Jesus. Amen. 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 you join me for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty, Mr. Cully, any amendments to the agenda? Um, I would like to remove uh, from the consent agenda item C. Remove that and remove it totally? From tonight, yes, sir. Okay. Any other? No, no additions, that's it? All righty. Hearing none, we'll move forward to the op op opening board comments. Mr. Black? Yeah, I just have one. Uh, um, I just want to... Uh, Thank the uh, Rotary Club, uh, Club for um, putting on the uh, Senior Citizen Gala. Um, for those of you um, who had a chance to attend or maybe didn't have a chance to attend, that is um, one of the things that we have here in um, Caroline County that is really, truly kind of a highlight um, of the county. Um, it is a great time to see everyone getting together. I think the senior citizens really um, very much uh, enjoy it, and so I was kind of proud to be there. So um, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Black. Mr. Seeley? I'd just like to echo the Senior Citizens Gale. It was a great night. I think most of us were there. We had a really grand time, and I think everybody enjoys it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mr. Underwood? No comments, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Akers? Mr. Chairman, I do have one. Uh, I think it's important that we recognize uh, groups and, and uh, individual, individuals that certainly do uh, things for the the people of Caroline County and, and go out of their way. Uh, I was called uh, over the weekend by a uh, young lady, I think she's in your district now, Mr. Thomas, who used to be in mine. Uh, she worked for the silver companies for years, 30 years I think she indicated, recently retired, and she just called and wanted us to know that uh, this is a, a family that does a lot of things. And for the first time this year, uh, the Silver Family Foundation is providing uh, Christmas, Santa Claus, to a total of uh, 57 uh, children from Caroline County, 25 through the Social Services Department, and uh, 32 through uh, Rice Chapel Methodist Church. Uh, they're spending $175 uh, on each child uh, this year for Christmas. I just think it's important that we uh, recognize and, and understand <coughs> that uh, when people do things for Caroline County, Residents, uh, children, we appreciate it tremendously as a, as a board and as a county. Thank you, sir. Mr. Taylor? Uh, and I would echo that as well. Thanks to the Silver Company or any group who wishes to assist in uh, helping uh, young people or any citizen of the county. Uh, the only other comment I have is um, I would like to uh, bring honor to or uh, speak about the loss of the former Commissioner of Revenue in the name of Mrs. Napier, Mrs. Nancy Napier. Uh, she served uh, as a commissioner for a number of years. She also worked a number of years in the school system. Uh, she was a bus driver. She was a, a teacher's assistant. And as I said, she worked a number of years as the Commissioner of Revenue. Uh, we'll be sorely missed and then would just like to say our condolences go out to her family. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Um, just a couple for me. 
Of course, uh, I, would, I would echo the same comments from Mrs. Napier um, and, and the senior gala. Special thanks go to, to the Jeffs, Jeff Black and, and Jeff Seeley. They have uh, for a long time been the highlight of the evening for me. And, and their dancing, without a doubt, gets the crowd going. And, and <laughs> we do appreciate that. It, it's great to have good fun for all those. And, and it is a wonderful thing. Um, one other note, um, Mr. Underwood, it's, it's in the, the letter that went out to the Dawn constituents on the water system, or the, excuse me, the uh, Dawn wastewater system. The, the letter said there was a policy change by the board. That it's actually the board is enforcing its existing policy, not changing the policy. So uh, that's something all, all, all board members should at least be clear of in case somebody asked them about that. So we're not changing the policy. We're just going to enforce the existing one. All right, having concluded board comments, we will move to uh, presentations and reports. And our first one is the VDOT report. Um, we actually have uh, a special guest from VDOT. We have the Fredericksburg District Administrator, Mr. Quentin Elliott, is here before us. Um, we met probably three months ago in Fredericksburg, and I said, feel free to come to Caroline anytime you'd like and bring money. So he's here, so I imagine you took care of the second part of that, too. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members <laughs> of the board. Um, you, you're absolutely correct. It was in September, uh, our Commonwealth Transportation Board visited the Fredericksburg District, uh, and uh, they came to, to see what was going on in the district. And uh, Mr. Chairman uh, had uh, asked me to, to do two things. One, he said I hadn't been down to, to, to visit with the board in, in a while, and so I took care of the first part. I came to visit. The second part, uh, we, we continue to work on that, and we continue to try to bring money when we can to, to the county to, to do some improvements. And, and there are a lot of good things going on in the county. We have uh, quite a few bridges under construction uh, in, in the district, uh, and we've got several more that are, that are scheduled and planned uh, for the future. So, so we, we are trying to accomplish the second half of that. Um, one of the other things, I, and uh, one of the other reasons that I came here, other than I was invited, uh, was um, you know, the Department of Transportation, we believe that uh, communicating and working with our local governments and our local boards is one of the things that's very important to us. Uh, several years ago, uh, we kind of lost sight of that in the organization, and we did some reorganization, some restructuring, and as part of that, uh, we, we kind of said that our, our communications with the board would be done uh, kind of haphazardly, uh, and uh, so to try to uh, correct that, uh, myself and my counterparts around the state, there are nine district administrators, uh, we went back to the commissioner and told him it was very important that we have uh, good communications and direct communications with the county boards. Uh, that is how we know what's going on in our community, know what, know what we need to be doing to address uh, your concerns. And so we pushed to get that to happen. Uh, and so your, your communications and your, your points of uh, communication has uh, always been that residency administrator. Um, and so we've been working, uh, trying to make sure that we had a good person in that role to be able to be that liaison that's going to listen to your concerns, bring them back, and get them addressed. Uh, and that residency administrator, they're responsible for making sure any issues in, in the area of project design, uh, getting projects in a six-year plan developed, uh, issues with maintenance, anything that's transportation related, that is the responsibility of that residency administrator to work with you to make sure that those get addressed. Uh, so what I wanted to do today, uh, you all have had the opportunity to meet Mr. Sean Nelson. Uh, Mr. Sean Nelson uh, was the residency, uh, assistant residency administrator in the Fredericksburg residency, uh, uh, but um, since uh, I, he tells me it's been about a month ago, uh, uh, he and I talked and uh, we came up with an agreement that he would become the residency administrator and your main point of contact for the department uh, moving forward. Uh, there were a couple of uh, issues that he had to make sure he take, took care of. One is that he would stay around and he's not going anywhere. So I, I do have that commitment. Yeah, see, everybody got a nod, everybody, in. so, so uh, he, will, he will be around for a while. He is your point of contact, uh, and he, he has a great, great attitude. He is focused on addressing your concerns, listening to your concerns, and trying to take care of those. And so I just wanted to take this time to introduce him as the uh, new residency administrator for the Fredericksburg residency. Uh, and 
at this point in time, if y'all have got any questions you want to ask me while I'm down here, I'd be glad to try to uh, pass those on to Mr. Nelson so he can answer them, but uh, if, if I can't. But, uh, but anyway, I, I would be uh, glad to try to answer any questions that you may have with me, and if not, I'll turn it over to Mr. Nelson so that he can take care of uh, the official VDOT uh, work here. Mr. Elliott, thank you as always. Any questions for him at this time? I just have sure, a question. Sure, Mr. Black. Um, the, trans the state transportation bill that was passed last year, um, do you have any idea what exactly that would mean for, I mean, I know there's more money being pumped into um, because of increased taxes and so forth. Do you have any idea what that would mean for like localities like Caroline, what, what, that, what exactly that means for us? Um, there are a couple things that, uh, that came out of the transportation bill. Um, one of the first things, and what I'll do is I'll kind of go through, uh, if you don't mind, I'll go through a couple of those, those issues. Uh, basically, uh, this bill uh, adds uh, about $11 billion to transportation over the six-year period. Uh, that's a significant increase in the program. Uh, our, pre our annual budget is, was somewhere around uh, between four, uh, around $4.5 billion annually. So as you can see, that's an, that's an increase of uh, approximately two, um, almost $2 billion a, a year in transportation. What that has allowed us to do is um, focus on some important things. One of the things that we've had a challenge with is our, our paving program. Uh, when we were uh, short of, of dollars, um, our, our program was, uh, was uh, pretty lean. We were spending statewide probably about um, $200 million statewide on paving our interstate primary and secondary roads. Uh, we have uh, increased that program now with this new transportation funding. It is going up to, we're going to be spending statewide about $500 million. So we've more than doubled um, the amount of money we're going to be putting in paving. So that's going to allow us to go out and address a lot of the paving that needs to be done. Uh, we've actually increased the amount of paving that's going to be done on the secondary roads, which are important to you uh, at, at the local level. Statewide, that number has gone up to about $200 million just on the uh, secondary system. So that's what we were spending on all systems previously. Now we're spending about two, 200 million on the secondary system. So you should see a lot of paving going on uh, in the Fredericksburg district uh, on the secondary system. Uh, Mr. Nelson can get you the details of which roads will be paved. We have a list of roads that will be paved over the next uh, couple of years in the, in the district, and he can provide you with that list of roads if you're interested. We're also going to be spending about $2.2 billion uh, on our bridges uh, over the next uh, six years. So again, there's a significant increase in the amount of money we're going to be spending on our bridges. Uh, that's an area that we really need to address, and uh, Caroline County is, being, is the benefactor of a lot of those increases, uh, and you've got a lot of bridge projects that are going on in the county. So that's, that's another uh, benefit to this, uh, to the program. Uh, when you look at it at the district level, uh, in the six-year plan uh, last year, we had just a little under $200 million in the six-year plan for road improvements in the 14 counties that make up the Fredericksburg district. That number is now almost $450 million. So again, the amount of money that's going to be spent in this district is more than doubling uh, in the six-year plan. So those are some of the uh, high-level ones. If you want some more specific details uh, as it relates to Caroline County, uh, again, uh, Mr. Nelson can uh, get those numbers to you and let you know what, those, uh, what they are. Some other things, there are some additional funds that are being put on unpaved roads. Um, and I believe in about the next three years, there will be actually money being coming back to the counties in your six-year plan that will show an increase in the revenues that you can put towards projects that are of interest to you at the local level in, this, in the secondary six-year program. Hopefully that answers some of your questions. I just, uh, I guess the secondary question to that, when, when money is available in the region and you have, you said how many counties were in, involved? Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, is it, do you guys prioritize, is it, is it you guys make the decision or, I mean, how does that, is it allocated by percent, uh, you know, with county population, I mean, or is how does that, when you have that money and then you have to divide by 14 counties, how do you determine, well, Caroline gets this much or Caroline gets this project, Spalsylvania gets this project, Fredericksburg City, I mean, how do you determine where that money is dished out? Um, we're, we're transitioning uh, with this new uh, legislation. Um, the first, I believe, and don't, don't quote me completely on this, but I believe it's the first $500 million of new revenues annually um, 
goes, and this, this is uh, in year three, the first $500 million, it goes to the CTB will uh, distribute those dollars based on needs around the, the state. Uh, and then uh, anything above that will be uh, put back to the district to then uh, do as we used to do years ago where we could turn around and look at projects at the district level and where we'd like to see those revenues allocated. Uh, again, during that same time period, the counties will be receiving in, an additional funds uh, beyond the telecommuting fees, which are now all the dollars that you receive for your secondary program. So you'll see those numbers increase. You'll see the numbers for the unpaved roads in the counties uh, begin to increase also. So yes, there will, those, those numbers will uh, continue, continue to grow. Uh, the Commonwealth Transportation Board, again, what they do is they look at everything from a statewide basis. What I do is I compile a needs list for the district of where I think transportation dollars need to be spent. Working with our Commonwealth Transportation Board for the Fredericksburg District, we come together on this list and we submit that list uh, uh, to uh, our Richmond office saying this is where we would see our priority and each district does that and then they look at the priorities from an overall statewide perspective and then begin to allocate dollars to, to those uh, uh, projects. Um, is, is most of the money, because I mean, and just going to like the GVRC and FAMPO, is most of the money going to that, most of the money coming in going to that, uh, basically the, the 95 kind of offshoot going either to Orange, the, the, the dispute between Spotsylvania and, 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 and Stafford, is, 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 is it going towards that project? Um, that's one of the projects. Uh, we've got several major projects in the district. Um, and again, when you think of um, this district uh, and you look at it, one of our major roads is I-95. I-95, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not a main street, and sometimes we, we kind of think of roads when they go through our jurisdictions as a main street. That's a major roadway for the Commonwealth as far as economic growth, moving goods. It's a, a, it's a national asset in that it connects Maine with Florida, and there is a lot of traffic that goes through there. We've been making improvements uh, in Virginia on that stretch of roadway, uh, particularly up in northern Virginia, and what's happening is, is that improvements are being made in northern Virginia. It's bringing the traffic to our region much faster. So we have to begin to try to focus on making improvements to further uh, allow that traffic to move through. Uh, you know, we, there's nothing to have an 18-mile backup on the, on the interstate through the Fredericksburg District all the way up into northern Virginia. One of the first areas uh, that we're working on and where these dollars uh, will be going is uh, we are in the process of buying right away for a project up in Stafford County, uh, the I-95 Courthouse Road 630 interchange. Uh, that project is $184 million uh, itself, uh, and so we are in the process of buying the right-of-way. The right-of-way on that job is $57 million, uh, and so it will take us about two years to buy the right-of-way uh, and to relocate the utilities, then we will move forward with construction, which is about $110 million on that project. Other projects that we have, we also have a project that we got design money to do four laning of 95 from where the express lanes up in Stafford County at Garrisonville will end. Uh, bring in the bring in the four lanes down six miles further so that we can get the help uh, thin that traffic out coming off the express lanes We then have a project in the six-year plan to do what's called the Rappahannock River crossing project Which is putting CD roads across the Rappahannock River in uh, the city of Fredericksburg uh, uh, That's a major choke point and when you look at this region uh, in the Rappahannock River There's only four crossings in the entire region to get across there uh, until you go further south on 301 or, or out and towards Culpeper. So we've got to increase the capacity coming across there. And 95 of those four, 95 is the only major one. So what we're doing is we're working further down, looking at what we need to do. Uh, we're working with Spotsylvania County on a project to look at how we can improve the uh, interchange at Thornburg. Uh, and so, so there's different projects that we're looking at trying to move that traffic and get it to make its way all the way through our region. So yeah, so there, those are some of the high dollar projects we're working on, but there are a lot of other projects, intersection improvement projects. We've got uh, one you know, $5 million project for an intersection improvement over in Caroline County. We got a couple projects down in, uh, we've got one over in Northumberland County, an, an intersection improvement, several down in uh, the Saluda area. So yeah, there, there's, there's just money spread out, but the major dollars are being spent up north. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Quentin, one thing you kind of piqued me there. Um, 301 expansion used to be something we talked about a lot, and I know Carolyn's at the bottom of the Fredericksburg district, so 
that little er area coming from King George going south to Richmond is two lanes has been a major bottleneck when 95 is backed up. Is there any thought, you know, at a high level to at least consider that as a southern, you know, bypass or whatever? I think it's something that we probably need to uh, think about in the future. Uh, and, you know, what does the future look like? Well, right now, Maryland is looking at uh, expanding the uh, 301 bridge over right. the Potomac River. Uh, when that happens, that's going to begin to open up those, that traffic coming south. So somewhere in there, we have to begin to look at how we're going to handle that additional increase in traffic that we expect will come. So when we start looking at it from a planning and from a regional standpoint, you know, what improvements do we need to make? You know, do we need to make improvements for 301 to bring it further south? Uh, do we need to look at is that traffic going to then go south on Route 17 going down towards Tidewater and do we have to make improvements going uh, on, on 17 to handle that traffic? So yes, sir, we, we, we need to be looking at all of our roadway infrastructure and finding out what we can do to move traffic. Uh, and you know, we can only do so much along uh, our ex existing interstate roadways because there's a lot of commercial along them and it costs a lot of money to expand those roadways. So. Uh, it may be more cost effective to do something like 301, but I, you know, that's something that needs to be looked at from a planning standpoint, long range, uh, but there's nothing in the plan at this point in time. And, and would that be more appropriate to go to the Richmond district than the Fredericksburg district? Uh, it, it will be, a, it would need to be a combination because it, it, it uh, goes through both districts. Uh, well. So, okay. yeah, we would have to look at that from a planning, and we do have a statewide planning and priority process. We go through, we look at traffic, we look at accidents, and we look at all all those things on our major roadways, and that helps us to begin to prioritize, prioritize which routes we should be looking at. Okay. Well, again, thank you for coming. Right. I'm sure you're going to pass it on to Mr. Nelson now to, to take the heat, right? Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I come with all the good news and leave him with all the other stuff. Okay. <laughs> right. and thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. All right, we've got, we got one more. Yeah, I just have one question for you, if you don't mind. Um, we have been um, considering uh, the joining of PRTC, or at least it's been talked about. We've not made a decision. All right, but there have kind of been a question as to whether or not, not just our locality, but a locality joining that, will that in any way impact any of the revenue coming from uh, the state? I mean, it's, do you know anything about that, or is that something you... Um, if, if you end up joining a, a MPO, those MPOs have certain dollars that come to the program, uh, and then those dollars are distributed to all of the jurisdictions within there, and it depends on how each MPO uh, operates. Uh, the Fredericksburg MPO, uh, basically what they do is they prioritize and say this is the number one project in the region, and this is where we want to see our money going, and so then they begin to work down their priority list. Uh, in this district, also, Gloucester is actually part of the Hampton Roads uh, MPO, and they, so they, they have a, uh, a, a process for how they go about distributing their dollars down there. Uh, so it's going to depend on how the local MPOs and how they set up uh, prioritizing and, and spending their dollars. We're not talking about an MPO. We're talking about the Potomac Rappanic Transportation Commission. PRTC. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking... Vampire. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you're talking about uh, as far as transit and, and rail and all those other things, right. uh, I think there are some good benefits that can, can come from that. Um, I, you know, I, I would suggest we probably need to have more conversation with the Department of Rail and Public Transportation, who, who are the agencies that help oversee and do that. So we can work on and I'll work with our folks to try to get you a little bit more information back on that. Can I? Ms. Akers, go ahead. See, we, I we're not going to let you go. I was at a, a conference recently, several of us were, uh, and uh, there was people from the state VDOT uh, office there. And one of the things that they made pretty clear to us, and, and I serve on the Transportation Committee for Virginia Association of Counties, and they made it pretty clear to us that localities that wanted to see improvements to roads, widening of roads, uh, you know, turning lanes and all those type of things, that the, the counties that had uh, a means of uh, revenue sharing would get uh, uh, the first shot, if you will. They're the ones that are going to be looked at the most. If they're willing to come in and help with the, uh, the sharing of the revenue, or sharing of the cost, then their chances are going to be much better than a county that um, does not. Is, is that the way you see it in the Fredericksburg 
Um, localities that, that do come forward with money to help uh, fund and move projects along, uh, yes, yeah, we, we, uh, we're going to work with them to try to help further those projects the best we can. Uh, in this district, uh, I think this past year we had about $18 million of local funds put towards revenue sharing, which would then be matched with uh, state dollars for a total of $36 million of additional revenue coming into the district. So uh, we, we do encourage localities to participate in the revenue sharing program. Uh, statewide, I believe there was over $180-some million worth of requests made uh, for matching, which basically you double that. Uh, and the program was set up for $150 million. So folks are already asking uh, for more than what's there. And about five years ago, you may recall that number statewide was really we were only putting about $15 million in revenue sharing. We found that you know, working with localities, you know, if you look at the math, um, you know, $15 million, we match with 15, that's $30 million, uh, versus if we put up, uh, you know, $150 million, localities put up $150 million, you can see it's really uh, increasing the amount of money it's going to, to uh, transportation. So, yeah, we, we encourage localities to participate in that program. And I think, Caroline, certainly uh, we participated, I believe it was last year that we, uh, I don't see Mike Fincher, but I think it was last year that we, uh, or this year that we decided to go ahead and do revenue sharing to uh, improve uh, Ladysmith Road from 95 to Route 1. So, yes, sir. I think it was close to $900,000 for us. Yes, sir. Uh, and that did allow that project. We had it uh, designed right away purchase, so it did allow that project to go to add and go to construction. All right. Thank you. Well, we were, we were kind of asked to help contribute, but yes, sir. thank you. And we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Underwood, you had a question? I was just wondering if we could, we could have them come back and look at the pros and cons of the PRTC. When we're discussing the PRTC. And move again. forward. So we do, we do have all the information because I don't think we have all the information. And I don't want people to be told that it's not good for Caroline. Or it is good for Caroline. I think we need more information first. Well, so if we can get right. more information, that would be good. Well, what, we'll, what I'll do is I will pass along your, your request to the uh, Department of Rail and Public Transportation and uh, they would have to be the lead agency um, in the discussions. We will participate in those discussions. I am very interested in how we can use transit to address uh, transportation. We have to look at all modes of, of uh, transportation uh, and I believe uh, rail and I would believe rail in this area could do a lot to help address, uh, address that. Uh, looking at uh, buses and other means of transportation. So um, I, I, I really encourage y'all to continue to look at that as an option. And again, we'll do what we can to support, but we will have to uh, uh, let rail and public transportation take the lead. And I would you know, suggest that you know, maybe you could have a work session and have all the different uh, people that you need to have here to help answer questions. You would need PRTC to be here uh, themselves. You could have uh, rail and public transportation. VDOT could be a participant in that program uh, to, and you know, just have a work session and, and then put all the things out on the table and questions and concerns you have and, and let's see if we can get you the answers you need to help you make your de the decision you need to make. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Elliott, again, thank you for coming. All right, thank you, sir. We'll see you again shortly. Yes, sir. And now, Mr. Nelson, I think all the board members got your information. Yes. Um, good evening, members of the board, county staff. Um, I guess you received our December report, and I wanted to make one update to that report. We have um, Mr. Akers listed as the chairman, and we realize that it is Mr. Thomas, so that will be changed and reflected in future reports. Um, first off, I wanted to go over some of the preliminary engine projects that we've got going on. The Route 639 Lady Sniff Road project that Mr. Elliott had alluded to has um, actually been advertised for construction and has been awarded to J.L. Kenton Sons. We anticipate that project starting sometime in the spring. Route 633 Bridge Replacement Project was re-advertised in November of 23rd, this month of 2013. The Route 654 Bridge Replacement over Reedy Creek Project was advertised on October 8th. The Route 721 bridge replacement over Beverly Creek um, has design underway currently and we anticipate advertisement for this to happen in July of 2015. Now to move on to some of the issues that we had and concerns from the last board meeting I attended, I believe that was in September. Um, first off, I'll start with Mr. Black. We had a request to review the Route 639 Ladysmith intersection light there. There were some timing issues in the early morning a.m. 
We determined that there was a fail, fail video detection at that location, and we fixed that on the 18th and have not noted any issues since then. There was a request to review the, the signage as you approach land, Lake Land or from the Spotsylvania side. I looked at that. Um, we had traffic engineering looked at it, and we did determine that there's ample advance warning at that location. Well, there's three signs up. There's an advance warning sign for a cautionary speed around the curve. There's an advance warning sign for stop vehicles, and there's an advance sign for turning vehicles also at that location. Um, we also had a request to look at the site distance at Bridlewood subdivision on 639. We have gone out and we continue to cut back that site distance to try to keep that from being an issue. I went out and looked at it twice and utilized my vehicle. And it seems as you pull up to the stop bar, you really can't, it's, it's hard to see because of the bank that's there. But if you move up just a little bit, you can see around, around the bend there. Um, the next issue, let's see, Mr. Underwood, you had a request for us to look at the approaches at the CSX bridge over 652. I believe our maintenance crews passed that area. Then let's see, Mr. Seeley, you had requested us to look um, an update on the Maricosta Creek bridge replacement on Sparta Road. We don't have any current plans for the bridge replacement for that bridge on Sparta Road. Um, I talked to our bridge engineer. We don't have it in our six-year plan, and we don't currently have it in our three-year plan for, for maintenance. And I would just like to add that I think in Caroline County, we've got approximately 10 bridges that are structurally deficient right now. Right. And those bridges are above, on the list ahead of this bridge. I guess I'm just concerned because there's not many ways around that. And that is a major thoroughfare right now, and it's been flooded, you know, again recently. And, Jeff, this is the bridge right at the, at the, uh, fire, at the fire, fire department. Wall. Yes. Right. Okay. And, I mean, our, our bridge crew is out there and inspecting it and making sure that there's nothing structurally um, deteriorating that bridge that won't allow us to get across it. So we'll continue to monitor that. But as of right now, there are no plans for a replacement in the near future. So how do you get it on the plan? If the county would like to proceed with it as on the plan and make it a priority, it could go on a secondary six-year plan. Well, we can talk about that. One other, I guess I have one other question on the Beverly, Beverly Run, the Beverly Run Creek Bridge. Mm -hmm. Is that a Caroline project or a King Queen project? Well, it's located on the county line. Right. So it's, it's pretty much a Caroline, and we're coordinating with them also. But it is a Caroline project. OK. Thank so you. So we can just mm -hmm. fix the half that's on the Caroline side and let them? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Only one lane, the one lane that goes to it. they got to fix the one that comes from it. All right, um, let's go to Mr. Thomas. You had a request for us to review the turn radius at Ruther Glen, at Carmel Church Loop Road and Ruther Glen Road. Um, I went out and looked at that. I monitored it. I did see where the trucks do encroach that turn lane. I did not see where trucks encroach the turn lane when a car is there, though. It seems like to me they can make the maneuver when the car isn't there. But we do plan to address the issue by restriping it and removing the dedicated left turn because it really isn't needed there for that for that section. So right. we plan to address that this spring. Okay. Um, the other request was an update on the sidewalk repairs in Belmont subdivision. We did complete some repairs in that subdivision already, and we plan to go back in the spring and finish. Um, March, April? It would be sometime after April. Sometime after April. Yes. And, and I have to ask because they ask me on a regular basis. And I'll be glad to coordinate with them. We'll probably put out some advance notice in their neighborhood to let them know that we're coming in because we do block their driveway entrances when we repair those. So we'll be working with them ahead of time when we get ready to schedule it to come in. Okay, thank you. And, and this is a case where, I mean, this is a subdivision that had roads that were eventually turned over to the Commonwealth. And, and part of that turnover is, is what's a question. Not all the roads in that subdivision have been turned over yet. I agree. So we have to coordinate between VDOT and really the HOA. The county kind of serves as a middleman. And I went there right after I think we talked and said they were all done. And somebody said, no, they didn't do mine. No, no. And then I found out it was, yeah. we did some and we'll do the rest in it. Yes, okay. correct. So we do appreciate that. And one more appreciation is um, you did put crosswalk stripes um, on. 207 business yes. right in front of the food line, which we do appreciate. 
You can actually feel them when you go over them. I don't know if that was intentional, but it, it is a they good notice on it. So that, um, that's good. We think that'll help at least in the folks coming from the apartments across the street. So thanks for that. No problem. Um, Mr. Taylor, I will come to you. Um, you have requested an update on the warrants for guardrail on 606. We did that, and we have identified the guardrail needs out there. And since we just recently paved Route 606, it's eligible to go on our list for deferred guardrail. So we plan to put that on our contract for 2015 to have all the guardrail through there upgraded and installed. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, as of now, that concludes my report. Are there any other issues or concerns from any, the board? Any questions for one, Mr. Nelson? One question. Mr. Seeley? Mr. Nelson, mm -hmm. the first turn into Bowling Green off of 207, and that, that's probably at the far end of West Broadus. Mm -hmm. When you make that turn at night, there's no light. I mean, no street light. Is there any way to put a white line to, d to indicate that you'll be in the lane when you finish turning from the beginning of the turn to the end of the turn? So there's currently no pavement marking. So you want to just know, you want a line to, to, in, to locate the termination of the turn lane? Well, the problem is, is when you make that turn, you're crossing over 207. Mm -hmm. And in the dark, I watched a, a car the other night end up in the median almost on the hill. They obviously didn't know where they were. Okay, I will. I'll if you take make a that left turn off of 207 coming into Bowling Green, mm -hmm. in the daytime, it's great. You can see the whole thing. It's at night that I've witnessed that a couple times, and I always forget about it until tonight. Oh, people going north towards Baltimore, and then they make a left to come into Bowling Green? Right. Okay. And they, don't, and they make the turn, and you're like, and until the your headlights of the road. pick up the, the actual hill, yeah. okay. you don't realize that you're not going to end up on the road. We'll see if we can do something with pavement markings in that location to kind of. And that's probably all it needs is some kind of marking, but I've watched it a couple of times. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Mr. Black? Mr. Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just have a, you know, and I know we're going back to this. Um, after the discussion that we had in the last meeting, um, uh, there was a morning I was going to work. I almost saw someone get cold clocked um, out at that intersection. That intersection, if you're coming from either direction, if you, if you just sit there and watch, I mean, we could get the sheriff's department to go down there and clock people going through that intersection. You've got cars going in either either direction, and then you've got people going through either to Ladysmith or from Ladysmith towards Pennsylvania um, that are going extremely fast. Um, and if you know, the, one of the mornings where I was going to school, I was w watching someone go towards Pennsylvania, um, and there was a there was a car turning to come into Landor, and so there was the, the car in front of me turning left was blinded. You see what I'm saying? They were turning left, and they couldn't see the car behind them. And it was just like the deer in headlights. They froze in the middle of the intersection. I'm, and I don't know what the answer is to the solution, but you know, to say that the warning signs are there, I understand maybe that the warning signs, according to you guys, are there. But I'm concerned that someone is going to be out in that intersection and get, you know, they're they're going to get t-boned by by a car going 45 miles an hour through that through that area, the turning out of Lake Landor in, in any direction, and someone's going to send them, someone's going to be getting killed. So I'd like to maybe if you could give me a call, if figure out maybe a okay. solution that we could we could figure out. Um, um, to this because I've had people calling me in regards to this and I actually witnessed it you know shortly after the last time you were here so um, so it's not something I'm trying to make up and I and I don't know reducing the speed limit or whatever you know unless the sheriff's department's out there constantly giving tickets and so forth but it is it is it is an issue um, in that area okay, okay. as far as as far as the through traffic is concerned I think we can probably have a conversation I can bring our traffic engineer into that and see if there's any other means of trying to to solve the problem because I mean with the signs if you put up too many signs, people become almost, they're, yeah, they're immune to it. And when I went through there on multiple occasions, I keep seeing these signs, and I'm like, okay, well, when am I coming up to what they're trying to warn me about? Right. So I was almost immune to the signs that are currently out there. Okay. But I, mean, right. I think we can have a discussion to try to figure out how to okay. ultimately solve this. All right. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Nelson? Okay. Mr. Nelson, we appreciate what you've done. Um, just like your predecessor, I don't think you were here when he was here, but I told him he did a great job, and I appreciated him doing a great job. You did a great job, and we appreciate you doing a great job. Appreciate that. And we will let you know when you don't. I appreciate that, too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. In front of Mr. Elliott, you're doing a great job, so we appreciate it.
All right, our next one is uh, our next presentation. If, if uh, you gentlemen would like to leave, feel free. Um, our next one is the uh, county fair. Mrs. Whitaker. Hi there. How are you today? I'm great. I'm glad to hear that. And you're going to give us an overview of the great county fair we had this year? Exactly. I always have trouble with this because I don't do this but once a year. <laughs> one of my Boy, what do I need to hit Push you? control, alt, delete. Where'd Joey go? Alan, can you help her? I don't her? have my glasses on. I don't know where mine are. Mr. Clark, help Oh, here's mine. It should be on the right-hand side. You've got to push them down, hold them, and then hit, hit delete. And hopefully there's no password. Hit return. And there's a password on the machine. Now, friend, you do this every year. We thought you'd be ready. <laughs> oh, we should be good. Wheels, wheels still turning. It's warming up. But we, we, I mean, we have your presentation if you just want to go ahead. There we go. County Ag Fair in the middle. Double click. Now on the bottom over I'm here, ready. on the okay. bottom over here it says slideshow if you want to yeah. click on that one or you just want to leave it like that. Can I just use this? F5. Well, F5. move the cursor to right here. Well, I didn't wear my out. glasses. That wasn't good. There you go. Uh, okay, you got it. You can can I just out. use That's this good. now? Perfect. You got it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mr. Thomas, for your patience with me. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and other board members and county staff. I certainly am pleased to be here as president of the Caroline County Agricultural Fair to give you our 2013 update. And how am I doing the update? Just push the space bar, it should move. Okay, uh -oh, maybe not. Wrong thing, wrong thing. You can hit the up arrow. Hit, hit yeah, next. Yeah. Hit, hit. Okay, now just hit the up arrow. There we go. I'm just gonna stand right here. Okay, to, re to review our mission, of course, is to encourage the understanding of agriculture history in Caroline County, educate about present-day ag business and community activities. And we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization, as you well know. And what are the, some, the things that we have done in 2013 to support our mission? They have been numerous. We are now home of the Virginia Poultry Breeders Association, and we'll be the home of that group for the next decade at least. <coughs> Another important thing that we did in 2013 was reestablish the fair judging school at the state level, and so far we had hosted two schools in 2013. And it's significant in that we are developing a database of certified fair judges, and we were contacted this fall to provide judges for the Virginia State Fair. So this was a much needed, um, uh, there was, this was much needed in the in the state, and we're glad we're able to help fulfill the need to develop certified judges. We are now represented on the Virginia Association of Fairs Board of Directors. We also donated ag-themed relay uh, books to the county schools this year, and we continue to support youth education programs in Caroline County Public Schools. We focused on the Caroline High School Culinary Arts Program and the Agriculture Education Program, Future Farmers of America. And that chapter is becoming uh, reestablished in the high school. We provide opportunities for these culinary arts students to come and showcase their skills. And we, in turn, support them by giving donations so that they're able to go to state level competition in the spring of each year. It's also important we establish two $300 scholarships for graduating seniors who are pursuing culinary arts careers. And we have um, given those scholarships out, and two young people are in culinary arts programs from Caroline High School. We also provide opportunities for the FFA students. It's also important that we give back to the community, and we do this in various ways. We continue to sponsor and provide a site for the American Cancer Society Relay of, for Life, and we will be doing that again in 2014. We work with the Humane Society of Caroline and provide a site for their Pause for Fun 
program they have in the spring. And as well as we were the site for the 4-H Ag Day for Caroline